Hey what's up guys, Totally Dubbed here and today I'm going to be showing you a video on delidding your CPU. Um, delidding is used for uh, basically uh, reducing temperatures and throughout this video basically I'm doing a commentary over the video that I have so it's certain bits are sped up and whatnot. So as you can see at the moment I have um, my previous TIM which was on there which was the MX2, uh, uh, Arctic uh, MX2. And um, I was actually very nervous when doing this, uh, I have to say. So um, you might see you know, I have sweaty uh, uh, hands. Um, sometimes I'm quite nervous when I'm um, doing things. But anyway, uh, <laughs> and on the side I've got my old Pentium 4, uh, which I bought for £1.80 uh, £1 to try and delid. But uh, I wasn't able to delete it uh, simply because it, uh, it was soldered on so yeah, I just put, I drew a, a smiley face on it. <laughs> so um, first of all what you want to do is obviously clean your CPU. Um, the CPU I have is the i7-3770K and in the UK that's a 250 quid uh, processor so it's not cheap at all. I have to tell you there are certain warnings uh, of delidding. First of all, there's obviously um, static. Uh, you might um, cause uh, static um, and transfer static to your CPU and therefore basically render your CPU completely um, useless. Um, there's um, a way of scratching your CPU because basically you're putting a razor blade in, in between the uh, IHS. The IHS is the metal bit and the PCB is the green bit and you're basically sticking a bl uh, blade in between there and therefore you could easily um, scratch the PCB. Um, you could also damage the die which is the actual main membrane of the uh, CPU um, and therefore render your CPU useless. Um, you could also chip your CPU and therefore when it comes to putting it um, there'll be problems uh, into fitting it and everything like that. So those are the warnings. Uh, so first of all what I would suggest is first of all be calm. Try and be calm. <laughs> stay calm and delid. Uh, stay calm. Uh, secondly, have um, equipment around you. What I suggest is a very thin blade, super thin blade. Um, I, um, I'll link down in the description a blade, for example. Um, I also suggest getting rubber gloves because that prevents um, your static. Um, I also suggest a anti-static wristband, which basically you attach to your um, wrist uh, or maybe your leg or whatever, um, and attach that to some um, somewhere metal. So therefore, any sort of static, if there is any in you, then it'll be transferred out. I also suggest a soft background. Um, by that I mean um, on on the on the ground you want something quite soft. So over here I was using my mouse mat. So I would suggest something quite soft because you'll have to sometimes press um, quite hard. Um, I would also suggest a lot of patience, um, a very lot of patience. It, ta it took me almost an hour to do this, um, but um, I would suggest uh, patience. Um, and apart from that, I can't really think of anything else. And obviously, you know, if you damage your CPU, then you should bear in mind that you've screwed up your CPU. So do bear that risk. Um, you know, keep that in mind. So to start off with delidding, obviously you clean off the tim, make sure it's absolutely clean, uh, which is, you know, it's all right as, as long as the, the the IHS is clean because it's easier to work with. Uh, you don't need to use any alcohol as of yet. Just basically um, use. Uh, just use as I as I did like a little towel or something like that, or a kitchen kitchen roll um, tissue, um, and then after that you want to basically grip the um, PCB, which is the green part again, and <coughs> put your blade in between the IHS and the PCB. What you want to make sure is that you're doing it very very slowly and at a at a, at a pace that you're basically wiggling it um, slowly. So as you can see um, over here, uh, I, I was kind of confused because it was taking quite a long time, but you just have to wiggle it left, um, back and forth basically. So as you can try and see as it's sped up at the moment, I'm just basically wiggling it back and forth. Another thing you have to bear in mind is as you can see, I'm not going too far deep because there's the die which is there and the die basically runs along the uh, IHS again I'll link another description um, a link in the description so you guys can see um, what are the safe zones of putting in the blade basically you don't want to pass those safe zones because the die will be there and it will be there it's just that 
you know you don't you don't want to reach that um that stage that you might be hitting it so also you don't have to be hitting it so take your time when doing it and wiggle it basically back and forth but also ensure that you're not putting too much pressure when you start slicing in don't put too much pressure because if you put too much pressure that blade's going to go straight through because, because there's nothing between that blade and the die because the glue you've just worked through it and you've already cut it so do that very very gently i suggest starting with the corners and then from the corners basically trying to um, lodge that um, that blade and trying to put it uh, basically horizontally or vertically which way you look at it um, and try and get the sides the sides are actually the hardest bit and in fact um, I actually scratched my PCB but was extremely lucky for not actually um, damaging it um, on the right side of my PCB so the closest to the camera well uh, it's going to be constantly rotating but on the right side of um, the PCB um, basically when I put my blade in um, I was, I guess, not really paying attention, but as I pulled it out, the angle of the blade was pointing towards the PCB. And therefore, as I did that, it's almost like I kind of scraped, you know, almost like you're scraping ice off a car. That's almost how I did it, but on the PCB. It was quite um, a, a small scratch but that small scratch could really render your CPU completely dead and at first I thought because of that I basically destroyed my CPU um, and because that the IHS um, sorry not the IHS the um, IMC which is the internal memory controller which in other words is the thing which controls your RAM on your board and the, C uh, the communication between the RAM and the CPU I thought I damaged that, but in fact, I found out that it's actually nothing to do with the CPU. It was actually to do with my Asus motherboard. So, what I'm trying to say is that you can damage it, and you have to be warned. Just try and be careful. Um, luckily, very luckily, I damaged it, but nothing happened um, for the CPU. It runs perfectly fine, and um, currently I'm rendering this video uh, with my i7 um, inside. So do bear that in mind so you can see that was the right side that I had it in there another thing I should mention is people ask um, what paste you should use now for on the IHS I suggest using a normal paste by normal paste I mean something like the Arctic MX2, MX4, um, Noctua one you know whatever something that's just normal and you understand what I mean by normal because I'll show you pictures at near the end of this video which basically show you what um, uh, collabor collaborators ah, um, liquid um, ultra looks like now basically they call that CLU or CLP the pro version and the ultra version I suggest getting the ultra version um, just because it's a newer one and it's easier to remove if needs be but basically that is a different type of paste and the way it works is completely different so when you apply that you want an extremely thin layer really 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 small layer of that so basically when you're coming to put that on if you leave that on after a while uh, by the way here you can see me um, getting rid of the IHS uh, basically it kind of like twists off um, and you just pull it out there you go um, when it comes to applying the CLU, what you want is the thinnest layer possible between the die and the IHS. And you might ask, why do you not use normal paste? It's because CLU has um, better um, better properties in terms of a paste, and therefore is much better to use. So I would suggest, well not suggest, if you're going to delid, use CLU or CLP um, for your um, TIM on the die. In other words, on the uh, PCB, as you can see, you're going to have to use CLU or CLP to see real differences in terms of temperatures. On the IHS, it doesn't really matter. The differences are maybe one to two Celsius. It's not much. Um, the fact I like using normal paste is simply because if I came to remove the paste, it doesn't damage the engraving and the markings on my uh, IHS. Um, if you ever have to send your uh, i7 back, then if your markings are gone, Intel will straight away refuse it. Right. 
so that's the paste explanation right there. Now going on to continuing the video and following the video, basically I was trying to clean the IHS, the, the underneath of the IHS, basically you got the, the, the black stuff is basically the glue, uh, the glue that Intel uses, like a silicon-ish, um, uh, silicon I think, uh, material. Uh, you can actually buy a similar um, silicon thing, and I'll, I'll paste that if you uh, post that in the li link in the description, um, which is basically similar to what Intel uses, uh, RTV black RTV silicon um, glue, which is used for head gaskets normally. So you could use that as well. So for the uh, IHS, I basically used my um, a tissue, um, and then I used um, my razor blade to try and get rid of it. I also used a credit card. Now you can see with the PCB, you can see I'm cleaning the dye with a cotton bud, or for you American people, that's a Q-tip. <laughs> so I'm cleaning it with a cotton bud, um, and that basically cleans the dye. What you wanna make sure is not to scratch the dye, and therefore you wanna use something soft. And therefore when I used my um, cotton bud, it's very soft so it doesn't damage anything. To clean it, um, what I suggest is using a credit card. It's best the best method. Use nails if you've got them. Um, however, I didn't have any nails, so it didn't really help. But um, I would suggest using a credit card. In terms of the IHS, um, it, it's a hard one because it's, the glue is very hard to get off. But um, after using a credit card and after using the razor blade, say, on the IHS, what you want to do is al um, apply some alcohol. So, for example, the one I had was 99.9% .9 alcohol. It's called Arctic Clean. Um, and that basically uh, cleans the... Um, the the paste or usually it's not for normal paste not glue quite well and I highly suggest using something like that because then you have a nice shiny finish I'll have pictures coming up and you'll be able to see the nice shiny finish I haven't got a very clean P PCB but I've got a quite clean PCB but IHS was not bad um, so I, I suggest that in terms of the um, in terms of everything else in terms of putting it back, well, when you put it back to the motherboard, you basically put this PCB on the on the socket um, with the uh, IHS on it. And when you come to clamp it down, you just have to hold your hand on the IHS whilst clamping it down. So, right, so here are the pictures. So as you can see, this is the, I, the underneath of the IHS, and this is the PCB. So you can see the black glue on the, uh, around, and on the die there's some glue, um, well, the glue, sorry, that is the paste that's on it. So you can see an image with them both together, uh, so as you can see the pattern of how it looks like. Once you clean it, it should look something like this. As you can see, it's reasonably clean. I got it actually cleaner in the following picture, as you can see. So, as I was saying before, on the right hand side, I'd scratched, I, I thought I scratched the IMC. Look on the right side, you can see a little scratch. It's the slightest scratch there, and it's basically where the ground is. So it should, it should have been fine, but uh, as you can see, any sort of scratch you want to try and avoid. This image is CLU. CLU was applied. It's a very, very thin layer, and it's very um, different in applying. As you can see, I have the brush, which is the brush which is given with the CLU. What I did is dip the brush into the CLU and had on my brush some CLU and brush that on. It's an extremely thin layer. I can't emphasize that enough. You want a very, very thin layer. You don't want any bulging um, things. As you can see, this image should be, give you a really good idea of how thin that layer should be. So guys, that's basically it. Uh, I just wanted to show you my um, Deleting experience um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope this helps you please do post in the comments um, your opinions and if you manage to successfully delete or not all right guys thank you very much for watching take care bye bye